Creole. I like Grand Bleu. Yeah, so. <laughs> what do you like about Isaac Humphrey's game? Uh, just, you know, he's a very smart player. Uh, he can shoot it like crazy. You can't leave him open at all on pick and pop because he's, he's going to make it 95% of the time. He's going to knock it down. So uh, he just knows and understands the game. And he's getting really good down low, learning how to use his body. So I think he's going to be uh, really, really good. I think he can really yeah, help you guys. Yeah, he's going to be really good. So. How about your game, Scott? Where do you think you're, um, you're getting better? Uh, getting better at uh, being more physical. That's my main thing right now. Uh, be more learning how to be present, you know, both on offense and defense. So that's the only thing. Good luck. Thanks. At Madness, were you surprised when you came out and all the and, and the crowds just kind of started? Not Madness. I'm sorry, the camp out when everybody just kind of started gathering around you wanting autographs. Because I saw you guys kind of laughing about it. Were you a little surprised? I was. I was surprised because <laughs> we kind of got to experience it at different camps and. Uh, I came here for some events, uh, high school events, so they, st they still did the same thing. You know, that's just how crazy Kentucky fans are. But I thought it was, I thought it was still crazy that they were camping out there for three, four, five, you know, three, four days under the, uh, with the weather and how bad it was. So, would you do that for tickets? I don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. <laughs> I know, I know you it depends. It depends. I know you expect to play the first game of the season, but. How much, I mean, what do you think about all the stuff that's being written about um, How much do you, you know, think about uh, You know, I don't think those people really know what they've done for me. My fa uh, my guardian, you know, Gerald Hamilton and his family, taking me in from Haiti. I was a complete stranger, and I wasn't even that good at basketball. They were just trying to help a kid, and I just so happened, you know, to work hard and do what I was supposed to do and became really good. So, you know, I really appreciate them and love them because, you know, they really helped me to become the person that I am today. and you know, the basketball player that, that I am today. So uh, I, I, I'm very thankful for what they did for how, me. How so. much do you still stay in touch with Gerald? Oh, uh, we, talk, we talk almost every day, uh, especially me and his wife. So uh, we talk. She's like a mom to me. <laughs> She's like my, uh, they're like my American parents. So uh, we talk a pretty good bit. So. Right. Follow up on the Haiti on that too. What uh, what part of uh, the city were you from? And I'm from close uh, to airport. I'm from Port-au-Prince. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, I was down for cleanup and mm. and still going down. So, okay. Uh, how in closeness to the airport were you? West or uh, east of the? I can't. Remember. I was. I live far away from the airport. Okay. So All right. So okay. Yeah. Are your parents going to be able to make it for a game this year? Uh, plan that far. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to make it for a game, but uh, they should be here sometime soon. So. How much do you get to talk to them? Uh, I talk to them about two, three times a week. So really? we stay in touch pretty good. Too. On the phone or so computer? On the phone. On the phone. So. Were you able to do that when you were in Memphis too? Yeah. Yeah. We talked. Uh, we talked to her a lot, actually, you know, since I came here. So uh, we stayed in touch. She came to Memphis to see me. Um, you know, my family in Haiti and my uh, family here, my, uh, you know, Gerald and uh, his family, it's like, a, it's like one big family now. So uh, my dad called him to talk all the time. So uh, we are very comfortable with each other. Does your family in Haiti get the magnitude of, like, what you're going to be doing this season and uh, how big this is? Kind of, because, you know, they still read about the stuff online. You know what's going on, what's going around, and uh, you know people in here to keep up with that stuff to to a certain extent. So this, they kind of uh, know what's going on. So. What do you think it means to people back home to see you? I mean, maybe the number one pick next year, going to uh, star for one of the best teams. I in mean, the it's pretty. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. You know, uh, especially for basketball because it is a soccer first country. So uh, you know, uh, I think they're just now starting to like basketball a little bit more, so I think uh, that's pretty cool. Did you play soccer at all? I did. That's, that was my first sport growing up. That's mm -hmm. what I always wanted to do, become a professional soccer player. What position so, did you play in soccer? Uh, I played forward. <laughs> why, why stop? I mean, obviously uh, you grew I mean, up I grew too tall, yeah, yeah. so I don't know. I was, try I was trying to break my leg out there. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you when you had to give it up? Uh, I was like 13, 12, How 12 13, were you? like 6, 6. So Do you have a soccer player you modeled your game? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, Ronaldinho from Brazil. So that was my favorite team growing up. So.
do you watch? I mean, do you watch like, uh, club teams? And you get I mean, since I've been here, because soccer is not as big here in the U.S., so I haven't been keeping up as much with, as I used to. In Haiti, I watch soccer on, almost every day on TV. So since I came here, it's not on TV, on TV as much, and it's kind of hard to find to watch. So uh, kind of fell, I fell off a bit. So.